chapter 7-6, uh, we are going to be continuing with dealing with percentages, and we're sort of still going to use the same equation as we learned yesterday. We just have to kind of tweak it a little, because if you notice, these questions don't have the word is and of in them. Okay, so um, if you can think of and it and the only it's just a silly memory trick, but the word from and the word of both have an O and an F. Basically, your from replaces your of. Okay, here, um, but it's a little bit different thought process. So we're going to kind of talk through what we're actually looking at here. So yesterday we were just flat out finding a certain percentage of another number, right? So 12 twelve percent of hundred is blank. And so you were just simply figuring out a percent of a number. Here, we're finding the percent of change. And that is, we have to do it just a little bit differently because we're not just flat out finding a percent of a number. We want to know what percent a number uh, or what was the percent of change between two numbers. So this formula should look very familiar. And again, I hope hopefully you can connect that from and of, you just replace of with from. Um, but the formula that we're gonna use is still our percentage over 100, okay? That doesn't change. And then we're looking for the difference over the original. And our original is always going to be the from. I'll kind of blow that up a little bit. So our equation looks a little bit different because it's percent of change, not just finding the percent. So we have to keep our is kind of is what is the difference and then from the original. All right, so we can still sort of use it. And then if you'll notice a couple things in the instructions, because I always like to point out a few things. One is, let me, we'll do it in purple. There we go. Um, one is what's it asking us? It's asking us to find the percent of change. Since we are finding the percent of change, that tells us that every single one of our answers needs to be in the form of a percent. Okay. So if you need to give yourself a little reminder, since we're finding percent of change, your answers on all these are going to be percents. Also, it tells us to round to the nearest tenth. So we need to keep that in mind when we're writing our final answer. And then it also says, state whether or not the percent of change is an increase or a decrease, okay? So we can actually do the increase or decrease first because we just look to see, does our number go up or does it go down, okay? Does it change up or change down? So that's pretty straightforward. So if we look at number one, before we really do anything, are we increasing or decreasing here? Increasing from four to five, okay? So we can automatically put I for increase. Yes, you can just put I and D because I teach math, right? I like shortcuts. So we know we're increasing. So we've got part of our answer already answered. Now we need to know the percentage of change. Well, for all of these, we're finding percent. So for every single one of these equations, our <clears throat> side, our first, our left side equation is going to be X over 100 because for every single one of them, we're looking for the percent. And a big clue for that is that the two numbers given to you in the problem, neither one of them have a percent sign. So obviously you're gonna be finding percent here. All right, so from four to five. Well, the from is easy, right? I said from replaces of, that's the original. We go from the original to the change. So the from or the, the, orig or the original is always on the bottom. And then we need to know the difference, the difference between four to five. How much did it change? It changed one. And then you just do what we did yesterday. So we're going to cross multiply with our x, and we're going to get 4x equals, and then we're going to cross multiply the other way. 1 times 100 is 100. And then we are going to divide by 4 and divide by 4, and we get x equals 25. And so the other half of our answer is 25 what? Percent, and then that is what you would circle as your final answer. The I for increase, and then your percent is written as a percentage. So you don't have to put yep, absolutely. So this is a good example of what Blake just asked. We are going from 45 quarts to eight quarts. So first things first, are we decreasing or increasing? So I'm gonna put my D right there. That half's done. Now I know for all of these, I'm searching for percent. So I'm gonna go X over hundred on every single one of them. Now I need my, 
equation on this side. So what goes on the bottom? 45. And then on the top, we need the difference between 45 and 8. We need the, the amount of change. 37. 37. All right. And then we're ready to go. So if you guys want to just work ahead of me, everybody should have a calculator. If you don't grab one, because here in a minute, we're going to go around the room and everybody's going to do some. Um, so work ahead of me and then we'll compare answers here in a second. OK. Thank you, Eli. That was nice. Yeah, they're on the notes. Yeah. All right, so we had our equation set up. Do the butterfly, we get 45x equals 3,700. We divide off the 45 and we get 8.222222, whatever. But our answer, we need to round to the tenth. So what we put up in our actually answer that we circle next to the D is 82.2%, okay? And that's the work you'll need to show for any of the percent of change ones. Let's do one more example. We'll do it quickly. Um, so we know we're gonna, first of all, are we increasing or decreasing? Okay, we're increasing from $39.50 up to $40. So that's part of our answer. And then we've got X over 100 equals, well, we went from $39.50. So we know the from is our bottom number. Okay, that's our original. And then how much did we change going from 0. 0.50? Good. So go ahead. And if you want to work ahead of me, go for it. And then we'll compare answers here in a sec. All right, so when you do the butterfly, you should get X equals 1.265, something, something, something. Goes on for a while, but we don't need any more than that. So our answer that we're gonna actually write up with the I for increasing is 1.3% because we're gonna round to the 10th and add the percent sign. All right, do we feel good with that? Any questions on finding percent of change? All right, now we kind of have to, we're still gonna be using the same concepts here, but we kind of have to unhook our brain from percent of change. And now we have to go to finding the cost of a markup, okay? So it says find the selling price for each item given the cost and the percent of markup. So for every one of these now, we're gonna be given the cost of the item plus the percent of markup. But what we're finding is we are finding the selling price, okay? That's what we're finding here. So we need to know the cost plus the percent of markup added together is going to give you the final selling price. And because you're finding selling price, what form should your answer take? Yes, price should be dollars. Your answer here should all be dollars. So if you want to give yourself a little reminder here, all of your answers are going to be in dollars. Okay, just like up top, all of our answers were in percents. All right, so and just kind of the, the, the basic example I gave earlier was if I was going to sell these calculators to my students, but I wanted to make a profit, right? I go to the store and I buy a bunch of them for 20 bucks a piece and I mark them up a certain percentage. And so the markup is $5. So what am I gonna sell them to you for? Yeah, 25. I wanna get my $20 back that I spent to buy it. Plus I wanna get my profit of $5. So it's the cost of the item plus the markup equals the selling price. Okay, and that's what we're going to find here. Now we still, and this is really nice, we go back to our is over of here, 
um, is but now for all of these, we're going to be given a percentage because that's our markup. So if we're given our percentage, we know that we put 22 over 100. And it's the markup, a percentage of the, of the um, cost of the item. So we know that 150 is the of, because that's the original or the whole amount, okay? And what we're looking for is what is that, what is 22% of 150? Because that's gonna give us our markup amount. So now when we cross multiply, we've got 100X equals 22 times 150 is 3,300, and then we have to divide by 100 on both sides. And you can mentally do this division because the two zeros cross each other out. And so X equals 33. Now, is 33 our answer? No, 33 is just the markup amount. So now we have to figure the final, whoa, we have to figure the final selling price by taking the amount that they paid for it plus the markup, Okay, plus the markup. So this is the original cost plus the markup amount. And that gives us 183 what? Dollars. And that is what you circle as your final answer. Yep. Not bad at all. All right. So we'll just, if you guys want to, just work through this one on your own, I'll work through it on the board and then we'll compare answers here in a second. And then if you've got this, we will do that one story problem at the bottom really quickly. And then I'll give you your homework for today. Nope, I'm just writing it there so that you can see kind of what's in my brain. You do not have to write the words cost and markup. You do have to show me the, the ratios, show me the fractions, show me the cross multiplying, and then show me where you added it up. Um, but you do not have to write cost and markup there. That's just so you can see where my brain's at. All right, any question on figuring final selling price with a percentage markup? Are we good? All right. Um, if, and it's not, but if you were to be thrown a curveball and ask a pro, an item is on sale 22%, what would you do instead of adding? Sure. Yeah, you'd subtract, you'd subtract the original cost minus the sale percentage, and then that would give you the sale price. So you can do this, whether it's a markup and you're adding it, or it's a percent of, uh, or if it's a sale and you're subtracting it, okay? All right, um, this one, you don't have one like this on your homework, but you will see one like this. So I do wanna run over it really quickly. On Tuesday, a baker sold 132 cookies. On Wednesday, she sold 101 cookies. Find the, look what we're looking for here, find the percent of change to the nearest 10th. So if we're finding percent of change, we know we don't know our percent, so we put, X over 100, we want the original amount on the bottom. So she first sold 132, then the next day she sold 108. So what's her original number? Yep. And then what was her change from Tuesday to Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Subtract 132 from 108. Good, 24. Now we cross multiply, divide by 132, and we get 18.18, we get 18, 18, 18, 18, repeats forever and ever and ever, but it told us to round our answer to the nearest 10th. 
So our actual answer is going to be 18.2 what? Percent, because we found percent of change. So our answer needs to be as a percent. So <laughs> you did good. All right, for those of you at home, um, you need to put hit load on Cami, and then you are going to do number one, number two, number five, number 10, number 15, number 18, and number 21. Okay, those are the ones that you will do at home. Um, email me if you have any questions and submit it through Cami. And then make sure tomorrow for our e-learning day that you log in, do the jump start, and do the Khan Academies that I will push out this afternoon. Have a great weekend.